Filmdom's first blonde and first brunette, Marilyn and Jane won their chance to join Filmdom's immortals by their work in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, the Technicolor adaptation of the sensationally humorous musical comedy stage hit. This story is dedicated to Marilyn Monroe, a sadly misunderstood woman who dreamed of becoming an actress despite having all the odds against her, ended up being not only an amazing actress, but an icon as well. And like all icons, Marilyn was surrounded by love and adoration. Men have always occupied a significant place in her life. And of course, JFK was the most famous among them, but was he the only one? And was he really her lover? Let's see if we can uncover the truth. Throughout the years, Marilyn Monroe's love life has become as mysterious and legendary as her tragic death in 1962. As her close pal and photographer Sam Shaw, who was rumored to be one of her lovers, once said, if Marilyn slept with every guy that claims he was with her, she would have never had time to make any movies. So let's take a stroll down memory lane and explore some of Monroe's alleged relationships. First up is Jim Doherty. They tied the knot when Monroe was just 16 years old and still known as Norma Jean Baker. They were high school sweethearts, but sadly drifted apart when Jim joined the Merchant Marines while his young wife ventured into modeling. They called it quits in 1946. Jim later told People magazine that if it weren't for joining the Merchant Marines during World War II, she'd still be Mrs. Doherty today. Next on our list is Charlie Chaplin Jr., son of the legendary silent film star. Gossip suggests that they had a fling in 1947, but it came crashing down when Charlie found Marilyn cozying up in his brother Sidney's bed. Both Chaplin Jr.'s autobiography and Anthony Summers' book, Goddess, The Secret Lives of Marilyn Monroe, mention this spicy affair. Milton Berle enters the picture next, they met on set, while filming Ladies of the Chorus in 1948, even though Milton was dating Adele Jurgens at that time. He claimed to have had a short-lived romance with young Marilyn, before starring alongside her again in Let's Make Love Over a Decade Later. In his autobiography Burl said, Marilyn was on the climb in Hollywood, but there was nothing cheap about her. Now let us introduce Natasha Lightes, beloved drama coach, who became inseparable from Monroe both on and off set for seven years, sparking rumors about their relationship status. Their bond grew so strong that Monroe refused to film scenes without Lightes present. Speculation reached fever pitch when Monroe moved in with her coach to prep for Don't Bother to Knock in 1952. Talk about dedication, as for the rumors of other lesbian affairs with Barbara Stanwyck and Marlene Dietrich, Marilyn addressed the issue in her 1954 autobiography saying, a man, who had kissed me once, had said it was very possible, that I was a lesbian, because apparently I had no response to males, meaning him, she wrote. I didn't contradict him, because I didn't know what I was. Now, having fallen in love, I knew what I was. It wasn't a lesbian. Elia Kazan one of Hollywood's greatest directors, who confessed having a brief affair with young Monroe, while he was married to playwright Molly Thacker. In private letters Kazan revealed, he wasn't sorry about it, and didn't feel guilty for being attracted to her, describing her as, a little stray cat, when they were together. Interestingly enough, Kazan was chummy with Monroe's future hubby Arthur Miller and even talked about DiMaggio in his letters. He claimed that the baseball player had roughed up Monroe on multiple occasions. The Kennedy Brothers Monroe's most scandalous alleged romances were, with President John F. Kennedy and his brother Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy. Some people even think, her relationships with these two brothers played a part in her untimely demise. Gossips about an affair were fueled by her steamy rendition of, Happy Birthday, for JFK at his 45th birthday bash in May 1962 just months before she passed away. According to biographer James Spada, there's no evidence that the Kennedys caused her death. However, he did mention that it was obvious Marilyn had been intimate with both Bobby and Jack. Joe DiMaggio baseball legend DiMaggio described meeting Monroe as being like a good double play combination. The two met on a blind date back in 1952, when she was only 26 years old. Despite their differences, him being retired, and her an up-and-coming actress, they got hitched in January 1954 during an intimate ceremony at City Hall in San Francisco. However, Cracks started to show, as DiMaggio struggled dealing with his wife's growing fame, which eventually led them getting divorced only nine months later after they tied the knot. Marilyn's infamous billowing skirt scene from the movie The Seven Year Itch was said to be the last straw. Despite this, they remained good friends, 
and DiMaggio continued sending roses to her grave three times a week for 20 years following her death. Marlon Brando Two of the most renowned actors of their time, Monroe and Brando were rumored to have dated briefly in 1955 after she split from DiMaggio. The two attended the premiere of The Rose Tattoo together and maintained their friendship until Monroe's last days. Arthur Miller, Monroe later revealed that sparks flew instantly when she met the talented writer and playwright in 1950, while filming As Young As You Feel. However, it wasn't until 1955 that their paths crossed again, after Monroe had divorced DiMaggio and left Hollywood for the bustling streets of New York City. They started dating in secret and tied the knot in 1956. We're just perfect together, I'm head over heels for him. Arthur's quite serious, but has an amazing sense of humor. We spend a lot of time laughing together, she gushed in 1956. Initially, Monroe thrived away from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, embracing a more ordinary life. She turned into a homemaker, cooking, cleaning, and caring for Miller's children, who absolutely adored her. However, when she returned to work on The Misfits, penned by Miller himself, their relationship began to fall apart. Monroe's battle with addiction led to issues both on set and at home. Eventually, before the film premiered in 1961, they called it quits after five years of matrimony. Tragically enough, Monroe overdosed fatally just 19 months later. Frank Sinatra, the stunning blonde bombshell had a brief fling with old blue eyes himself shortly after parting ways with Miller. Following her separation from the playwright, Monroe found solace at Sinatra's abode upon returning to Los Angeles. Their whirlwind romance simmered down by 1961, when Sinatra popped the question to Juliet Prowse. Nevertheless, they stayed pals until Monroe's untimely demise. Jerry Lewis, in a shockingly candid interview with GQ back in 2011, the late comedian claimed he shared a hush-hush steamy affair with Monroe herself. First off though, Lewis was adamant about debunking rumors surrounding her alleged involvement with Kennedy. I'm telling you what I know. Never, and the only reason I know is that I did. Okay? As the interviewer's jaw dropped, Lewis confirmed the story and explained that Monroe sought intimacy like he sought laughs. She needed that contact, to be sure it was real. During her short life, the star was married three different times, with each marriage ending in divorce. Marilyn was also linked to lots of steamy love affairs, some real and others concocted by the public imagination. A lot of the depictions of her love life are only hazily based on truth. We could probably continue listing her love affairs and breakups, but the essence is clear. Marilyn loved men, and men reciprocated her feelings and literally idolized her. Unfortunately, the lives of true icons are often short-lived, and Marilyn Monroe was no exception. She tragically passed away at the age of 36 in 1962.